All right, folks, welcome to Chapter 6, Classes and Structures. Um, now, first we'll talk about structures, and then we'll jump into classes. All right, so remember that uh, last chapter we talked about arrays, and an array is a collection of variables that are the same type. So they all have to be doubles, or they all have to be integer, something like that. Well, a structure is like an array, but it holds multiple types. So if you've got a collection of data that's the same type, you need to use an array. And if you have a collection of data of different types, you use a structure. As far as the system goes, though, uh, when you create an array, the memory is allocated, you know, pretty much when the array is created. But with a structure, the, the memory or yeah, the memory is not allocated yet. Uh, it's not allocated at the declaration of the structure. Um, it's not allocated until you actually assign values to those um, uh, member, va member variables. So that's the big difference. Arrays, collection of data of the same type. Structure, collection of data of different types. Array, memories allocated at the start. Structure, memories not allocated till later on. All right, so what's a structure look like? So here's a basic structure. So we use struct to say, hey, here, this is going to be a structure. We're going to call this structure CD account v1. And then in that structure, we're going to have three variables, two of the type double, and one of type integer. And those variables are going to be balance, interest rate, and term. Now, a couple of things that are different with structures, we don't typically call the structure by its name when we're putting data in there. And I'll show you why in just a second. Um, but the second thing is we end it with a semicolon at the last curly brace. Um, and that's not something we, we have traditionally done uh, up until this point. So make sure you're aware of that when you do your structures. You know, if your structure's not working, look to make sure that you have that semicolon at the last curly brace. All right, so going back to point one, why don't we call it CD account v1? Well, the structure itself is a variable. So this structure is a variable that other programs or other um, things can use. So what we do is we give it um, its variable name. So um, CD account v1 is going to be called Bob account. And then I can do Bob account balance, Bob account interest rate, and I could do CD account v1 John account, and I could do CD account v1 um, Frank account. So I can use it as a variable to create other, um, I guess, groupings. So like Bob can have a, you know, his three variables, and Frank can have his three variables, and the variables are going to be balance, interest rate, and then the third one would be term. So a structure itself is a variable, and we we call that variable different things depending on what we're doing. So in this case, I have a structure that has you know balance and interest rate, you know banking terms, and I can assign that to other variables: Bob's account, Frank's account, you know Joe Bob's account, that kind of stuff. So make sure you're good with that. You'll you'll have to see this, and I don't want to call it a rename because that's not really what it is. Um, it's just taking, hey, here's the structure, and then here's what I'm going to call this variable, and then I'm going to start using these member values inside mine. But up until this point, we've never done this. You know, we've called we've you called the array by its name. We've called variables by their name. So this is the first time where we take a, something like a structure and we give it a separate or a different name. And the reason behind that is that way I can continue to use that structure um, by itself for many different things rather than have to keep recreating the structure. All right, moving on. So we put a dot operator to access those member values. So Bob account dot balance, Bob account dot interest rate, and then Bob account dot term. Uh, and then the things inside, you know, the balance, interest rate, and term, those are our member values. They're parts of the, of the structure variable. And because of this, we can have different structures with the same variable names. You know, we can have Bob account balance and then Frank account balance. Uh, we could have two different structures themselves. We could have the CD account V1 and CD account V2, um, and those could both have a balance variable inside there. But because we're renaming those or we're, we're giving those variable names like Bob account and Frank account, we, we can use the, the word balance because they're associated with other terms. Does that make sense? So let's take this interest rate idea here. So let's say I have a, going back here, I have a CD account V1 and I have a CD account V2. Well, maybe CD account V1s have a lower interest rate and CD account V2s have a higher interest rate. 
So let's say these are for home loans. You know, if you qualify for a V1, you get a 4% interest rate. But if you qualify for a V2, you get a 5% interest rate. So I can still use interest rate as a variable on both accounts because I'm going to have other names associated with that, like when I call them. So when I call them, it'll be something like Bob account balance or Frank account balance. And then depending on whatever, um, whatever I use, did I use V1 to be Bob's account? Did I use V2 to be Bob's account? Um, I can have multiple structures with the same member variable names, if that makes sense. That would have been so much more easy uh, on the whiteboards and then trying to do it here on these slides. All right, but you get the idea. So we can have multiple structures with the same name. All right, so let's look at an example. All right, this is from your book. It's Display 6.1. So here, you know, we do our, uh, our include, our namespace standard, and then we have our structure. Remember, structures and functions have to be declared before main. So in this case, we just create the structure before um, the main program. So structure, CDV1, and then we put our three things in there, balance, interest rate, and term. Um, we do some uh, commenting. And then we create a function. This is going to be a function called get data, and it's going to use our um, CD account v1, and it's also going to use another variable called the account. But notice there's an ampersand here. So going back from uh, a week or two ago, what does that ampersand mean? What's the difference between these two variables here? All right. If you remember from the the other, was it the last chapter? What I can't remember. What, what, I think it was chapter four. Ampersand means it does a call by reference. So CD account v1 with an ampersand is going to actually go to that memory. Uh, I'm just going to pass the memory location so you can grab the value, where the account is actually going to pass a copy of the value. So make sure you're good with the difference between a call by reference and a call by value. All right, so that's all I did was I created the structure and I, I declared my um, function. All right, then moving on, then we get into main. So in main here, I create a variable for that structure. So CD account v1 is now going to be called account. And then I'm going to call get data, and I'm going to use variables from account. All right, and then they've got a formula here for calculating the interest rate and the account balance and stuff like that. Then they have our, our three lines where it's going to format the, the code. So it's going to have two spaces to the right of the decimal point. Then it's going to say, hey, when your CD matures, you're going to have this kind of a balance. Well, then it's going to need to know, you know, hey, what is the interest rate? What is all that stuff? So then it's going to call here where it called the function. Then it's going to calculate the stuff, and then it's going to present that on the screen. So the last slide shows you that function, and the function is going to ask you, hey, enter how much, uh, enter, or how much you deposited, what the interest rate is, and then how long it is. And then I go back, and then I use those three amounts that you put in to calculate the stuff out, and then I show it to you on the screen. So pretty easy example. All right, so again, this one is Display 6.1. It's in your book. Um, if you have any questions about that, make sure you post in the discussion forum. All right, let's talk about pitfalls. Remember, that semicolon is required at the end of your structure, so at the end of the last curly brace. Um, that's usually where people make their mistake. They create the structure, um, but they do not put that semicolon in there. Also, sometimes because in the book, the way they seem to format everything is they're always putting their functions after main. Well, your structure has to be at least declared before main. Remember, everything runs from the top down. So if the structure is not declared or created in you know above main, then when it's called in main, it won't know what to do and you'll error out. Um, so we typically create our structures you know, in, uh, above main. So we create our structures first, we declare our functions, and then we write main. All right, and then from the example that I just showed you, um, you saw how a structure could be used um, as a function argument. Um, and there was a difference between, remember, pass by value and pass by reference, or you could do a combination. So in our example here, we did a combination because we created a function that included a structure. This structure was passed by reference, and then we had a pass by value. So this was a combination. So you can see functions are pretty useful, or I'm sorry, <laughs> structures are pretty useful. You can use them in, in functions, uh, whatever you want to do. 
All right, so now we're going to talk about using a structure from inside another structure. And, and again, if you have the sixth edition of the textbook, um, this example is also on page um, 253. Uh, if you have the fifth edition, it's probably like 251 or 250, something like that. All right, and then one last thing before I create it, remember, structures um, are, are created outside of main. So they need to be created or declared before the main. And then different structures can use the same member variable. So I can have, you know, Bob account balance, Frank account balance. So those are the two important things that I want you to remember. All right, let's go back to this example then. All right, I got Visual Studio up. Remember, I need to include IO stream, using namespace standard. I do void main, and then I do my brackets, and I get rid of the return value because I don't have to return anything because I'm doing void. So this is where I start from. Now, if you look in your book on page 253, again, if you're using the sixth edition, um, we have two structures there. We have structure date and then structure personal info. So obviously remember our structures have to be created before main. So I will uh, pause the video now and type those in real quick. Although it might not be real quick, which is why I'm pausing this. Alright, so here I've created the first structure. This one's called date and it has three member variables. Um, they're all of type integer, so I have month, date, and year. Um, but the structure itself is called date. Then I create a second structure here and this one's going to have three variables. One's going to be double, one's going to be integer, but then for the third one, I'm going to call date and call it birthday. So I can call a structure from within a structure, and that's what they're talking about, this hierarchical structure. All right, then I can jump down to main. And I can say, hey, personal info is going to be... John Mac. And then I'm going to fix that so it has the same variable name. So now I can fill in all this stuff, the, you know, my birth date, month date, year, my height, my weight, and it would all be categorized under um, John Mac. So I could do something like this. So I could see out, hey, enter this employee's height in inches. And then I could put, hey, see, and that's going to be John Mac height, because remember, John Mac is actually personal info, and personal info has a height variable. So, and then just to make sure that it works, this employee is blank inches tall. So if I run this, um, uh, enter this employee's weight, height in inches. Uh, let's say I'm 70 inches. This employee is 70 inches tall. But I can also call the date variables through the personal info because date is a part of personal info. And to do that, I would do something like, let me skip a line, and let me type this in real quick. All right, so for the other one, I could do something like this. Um, you know, enter the employee's birth year, and then it would become, you know, jmac.birthday.year. So I'm calling personal info because I renamed, or not renamed it, but I'm, I, I gave the variable name of John Mac. And then I'm calling variable birthday that's inside there. And then birthday is a variable of date, and date has month, date, year. So that one has to get a third addition, would be year. And then to test it, this employee was born in the year, you know, jmac.birthday.year. And then I could test it. So enter my height, 70 inches, and then enter this employee's birth year, uh, 1990, because I'm very young, and boom. So everything works. So that's how you do the what they're talking about, the, the hierarchical structure. I'm calling a structure from inside another structure. And in your lab, I think it's lab 10, you're going to have to do this. You're going to create a, um, a structure to hold like the date, the month, and the year. And then you're going to create another structure um, to be the event. And then the, like the event location, the event information, the event start date. And then the event start date is going to call back to the date structure to enter in that stuff. So it would work just like this. So all right, I think I think it's all on the screen now. So you've got your two structures, uh, and then in main, um, and then that's how you would call that stuff. So again, if you have any questions when you get to lab 10, you know, email me, use the discussion forum, or something like that. Um, but this one should be relatively easy for you based on all the stuff that I provided you right here. All right, I'm going to wrap this up, and then I'm going to do a class video next.